Rawiyul Hadith, the narrator of the Hadith. He is the second Khalifa al Muslimin wa Amir al Mu'mineen Abu Hafs. Umar ibn al Khattab ibn Nawfal ibn Abdul Uzza ibn al Rayah ibn Abdillahi ibn Qurd ibn Zarah ibn Adi ibn Ka'b ibn Lu'ay. The narrator of this hadith is Umar ibn al Khattab. He is the second Khalifa of the Muslimin and he is the Amir al Mu'mineen of the believers. His kunya was Abu Hafs, Umar ibn al Khattab. He was min Ashraf Quraysh. He was from the honorable men of Quraysh. يَلْتَقِي نَسَبُهُ مَعَ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ He meets the Prophet Sallallahu lineage, meaning him and the Prophet Sallallahu they come in the same place in terms of tribe, in Ka'b ibn Lu'ay. Ka'b ibn Lu'ay, the Prophet Sallallahu tribe and Umar's tribe come together. He took Islam the fifth year after the Prophet Sallallahu was sent as a messenger. أَسْلَمَ بِمَكَّةَ فِي سَنَةَ الْخَامِسَ مِنَ الْبِعْثَةَ it was also said no, it was the sixth. And he remained with the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Safaran Wahabaran. The Prophet did not travel to anywhere, the Prophet did not stay anywhere except Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu was with him. The, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam befriended the companions one to the other. Umar was befriended uh, and Brotherhood was brought between him and Abu Bakr. So Abu Bakr and Umar were together. Um, as the Messiah did. And they were the two ministers of the Messenger, Wazirai and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They were the true ministers of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That they were so consistently with him that they were referred to as what? Uh, they, 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 they were the eyes and the ears of the Messenger. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Umar radiallahu ta'ala and Abu Bakr, they both participated, and Umar participated in every journey that the Messenger did, alayhi salatu salam. And he took the Khilafah after the Messenger, and after Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And he established khayr, he, he established prosperity, and it was at his time when Baghdad, Iraq was opened. Iraq was opened at the time of Umar radiallahu ta'ala an, and it became an Islamic country. They unanimously agreed to refer to him as Al Farooq. Unanimously agreed on that name. Why? Because he distinguished and clarified the haq from the batil when his Islam came. Because his Islam was an honor that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought for the believers. As Bukhari narrated on the authority of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, that he said, Ma zilla a'izza mundu aslam Umar. We have remained honorable people the day Umar took Islam. We became very honorable the day Allah blessed us with Umar to be on our side. Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu is fadail jamma. He has great virtues. One of the greatest, greatest virtue that he had was he was promised Jannah alive. He was told that he would be Jannah alive. He died as a martyr, as a shaheed, in the masjid of the masjid of Rasulullah. So he wasn't just a martyr. He died as a martyr, leading the salah in the best place, which was the masjid of the Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He was killed and he was wounded by Abu Lu'lu al Majusi. لعائم الله عليه ما الله is consistent curse be upon him. Whilst he was leading the salah, he led the salah to al-fajr, and he died four days remaining of the al-hijjah. The year was سنة ثلاث وعشرين the twenty third year of the hijrah to Nabi صلى الله عليه وسلم. Abu Bakr and Umar were both buried, both buried next to each other in the house of Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anhu next to the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So his khilafah was ashara sinina, ten years, wa sittata ashur, and six months wa ayyam, a little days, actually a couple of days. Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu 
was the, uh, the second most greatest battle after Abu Bakr. Abdullah ibn Umar said, Kunna nukhayyu bayna ashabi Rasulillah. We used to give virtue to the companions of the messenger when Nabiyu bayna ashurina, the Prophet amongst us. Whilst the Prophet was with us, we used to give virtue to the companions. And say what? We used to say Abu Bakr, and we used to say Umar, and we used to say Uthman. And the hadith is Sahih al-Bukhari. We used to say Abu Bakr, we used to say Umar, and we used to say Uthman, and the Prophet never stopped us from it. Ahlul Sunnah had argued and had debated regarding, amongst themselves, some of Ahlul Sunnah argued that Ali is more virtuous, Ali is more greater than Uthman. So the virtue, the fadl of Ali and Uthman, there has come disagreement amongst Ahlul Sunnah. And anyone who does stake a stand in this issue, he has taken a weak view, but he still hasn't left the robe of Ahlul Sunnah. But if he says that the Khilafah of Uthman was not, didn't exist, and he has no place, and the Khilafah was only who? Abu Bakr and Umar and then Ali. Or he says that the Khilafah is only Ali. Then this person is a Mubtadi' Khabif. He's a filthy innovator. The Khilafah, there is no dispute amongst Ahl Sunnah regarding it. The Khilaf only occurred between Ali and Uthman who was more virtuous. That is regarding Umar radiallahu ta'ala This hadith, it speaks about the niyyah, the intention, and its position. The hadith starts by saying, إِنَّمَا الْأَعْمَالُ بِالنِّيَّاتِ The word إِنَّمَا The word إِنَّمَا تُفِيدُ الْحَصْرِ It benefits حَصْرِ And this is a unanimous agreement amongst the Sahabas. اتفاق السلف That the word إِنَّمَا benefits حَصْرِ And there was a time when I thought that إِنَّمَا it was inna and ma that came together that made it like in after observation and looking I realized that inna by itself stands like a word that it's not inna and ma that came together that, that argument is weak that argument is weak rather inna itself is hasan and the sahabas pay attention agreed that inna is what it benefits hasan now to show you that they, the Sahabas agreed was Abdullah ibn Abbas when he, when he brought the hadith of the messenger where the messenger said إِنَّمَ riba riba is النَّسِيئَ إِنَّمَا the Prophet used he said إِنَّمَا the riba is nothing except النَّسِيئَ and that's one of the forms of riba which we will come to inshallah when we speak about it so Abdullah ibn Abbas took from here that riba is nothing else except نَسِيئَ because you use the word inama, because everything else has not is being negated from it, and the only type of riba has been affirmed for nasiya this time. Does that make sense? Some of the scholars, and there are other forms of riba. Nasiya is not only riba al fadl. So the scholars they said the only way Ibn Abbas was refuted on this our point was not the usage of the word inama. Because that is unanimously agreed upon that is hasan. But they had to bring other evidences to say, no, also add this one to it. By other riwayat. And this was benefited by Ibn Daqiq al Eid in his kitab, Ihkam al Ihkam. So, inama, what does it mean? It means hasan. What does hasan mean? Hasan means it's bad to lil madhkur. It is that you affirm something for a particular thing you affirm a ruling you affirm a ruling for a particular thing and you negate it from everything else you affirm a ruling particular for something and you negate it from everything else now what has this hadith affirmed a ruling for exclusively because the word in number benefits what exclusivity that's what it means. Hassan means exclusive, exclusivity. It's just exclusive for this. What is it that it affirmed the ruling specifically for? We will say 
two views have been taken regarding this issue. Some of the scholars, they said that a Naba has given Hasr to what? Sihatul A'mal. That the action is not correct except with the intentions. So the ruling that is specified here is the siha, the authentic um, or the correct um, action, the correct action will only, so except with an intention, exclusively this ruling. If the, inter if the intention is not there, the action, the action is not correct. There is no intention. Al-A'malu here is general. It means all of actions. So what enters this? The actions of the tongue and the actions of the limbs. The actions of the heart is not part of it. The actions of the heart is not part of it. Why is the action of the heart being taken out? Because in the Al-A'malu and the Binniyat, Niyat comes after that. So the action of the heart has been taken out by the word and Niyat. Pay attention. Um, the word inama, as I said, it benefits hustle. And an amal benefits generalization. All of action that comes from the tongue and that comes from the heart, or those two actions, they require the action of the heart, which is what? A niya. Requires a niya. And without it, your action will not exist. The scholars, they disputed this harfujar, which is bin niyat, al-harfujar, and it's in majroor. What do they connect to? What are they attached to? The, the bin niyat, bin niyat, what is it connected to? We said that bin niyat, there's two views that have been taken. Some of the scholars said it is connected to sihatul amal, that they said the acceptance of the action. The second one they said no, it is the completeness of the action, which is kamalul amal, the completeness of the action. So the word binniyat, they said it's attached to one of two, either sihatul amal or sihatul amal, amal kamalul amal. I have to mention something now. We as humans, or the creation of Allah, we're mukallafin. We are what? We're burdened. We are what? Burden. We are burdened. We are told to do two things. Imma ma'murat or manhiyat. Pay attention, this is important. We are ordered to do? Two things. two things. We're ordered to come with two things. Either we are requested to come with something or we're requested to leave something. Whether either talabu fi'lin or talabu tarkin. We're in order, in order to do things, or we're told to? Everything we are told to do, it needs a niyyah. That's what this hadith is talking about. Every single thing we do, it needs a intention. Except, except that which evidences have shown that you don't need an intention for. Every action you are told to come with, you need an intention for it. I said, we are burdened with two things. We are burdened to come with something and we are burdened to leave of something. Everything which we are told to what? To come with. We have to come with an intention. Are you with me? Such as what? Praying the Salah is an action you need to come with. You need to come with an intention. Fasting is an action you need to do. You need to come with an intention. Um, giving the Zakat is an inter action you need to do. You have to come with an intention. You have to come with These are Ma'murat. You've been ordered to come with it. Except that which the evidences have shown that you don't have to come with intention regarding it. Like what? Like Raddu Duyun, giving back debts. The Sharia has ordered you to come with it. But you don't have to have an intention to give it. You don't have to come with an intention to give it back. But what passes you if you don't do it? The reward. If you give, give it back for the sake of Allah, because Allah has ordered you to do it, you do get rewarded for it. But we won't, we won't say sihatul amal the first time that, that the correctness and the acceptance of your action is connected to this. Does that make sense? Are you with me? 
We don't say that. We will say the acceptance of your action is connected to the salah and the other things. This one is what? Kamalul Amal. It's connected to the completeness of your action. Does that make sense? The next group is what? The manhiyat, that which you're prohibited from. The things that you're prohibited from, you don't have to come with an intention regarding it. You don't have to come with an intention regarding it. This one, the manhiyat, the prohibited things are what? The prohibited things that you're prohibited from, that you are told to stay away from. Huh? If you want to get rewarded for it, you have to come with an intention regarding it. And this falls under what? Kamalul A'mal. Completeness of the action. Not Sihatul A'mal. Are you with me? That goes under the second part of those who said that the Jarul Majru is connected to huh? the correctness. Connect, some, some said the acceptance of the action and some said what? The completeness of the action. The Manhiyat is connected to which one? The completeness of the action. Whereas the murat is connected to the acceptance of the action. The actions won't be accepted unless you do the intention. But if you leave of something, you don't have to come with an intention. It will only complete this action for you, meaning you will get a high reward for it. Such as what? Such as if the person, um, he stays away from zina. He doesn't steal. Huh? He doesn't steal. If he stays away from zina, but the reason why he didn't stay away from it is because he doesn't want to do zina. Would he be sinning for it? But he hasn't come with no intention for it. He doesn't have to come with an intention for this action to be accepted, for this action uh, to go through. Acceptance. This one is called kamal. This is acceptance now. Okay. In the sense, when I say acceptance, I, I mean that the action, some actions are connected to intention and they only become accepted this way. Yeah, this one will be accepted without any intention. I it will be accepted without any action. Mm -hmm. And it's four types, the prohibition. The things that are prohibited from you, <coughs> that you're told to stay away from, are four types. Something that has come to your mind. Khatara bibalik. It came to your mind. Uh, sorry, sorry. The first one is, Lam yakhtub bibalik. The first one, it hasn't come to your mind at all. Nothing has actually come to your mind regarding this issue. You never thought of zina. Walam yaf'alu. وَلَمْ تَفْعَلُوا And you didn't do it. Are you with me? It never came to your mind, nor did you do it. You don't get a reward, nor do you get a sin for it. Are you with me? The second one is what? It came to your mind. خَطَرَ بِبَالِكْ It came to your mind. But you remembered Allah and you left it for His sake. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. It came to your mind, you wanted to do the zina, you remembered Allah's greatness, and you remembered Allah's punishment and what awaits you if you do it. And then you said, Wallahi, I'm not going to do it. And that falls under the hadith, Man hamma bi sayyiatin, falam ya'malha, katabaha Allah indahu hasanatan kamila. Doesn't do it. Came to his mind. This is when he gets one reward for it. The third one is what? The third one is khatara bibali. It came to your mind. You wanted to do it. You wanted to do it. It came to your mind. And you wanted to do it. But you were unable to execute your want. You were unable to do your dream. You wanted to commit the zina. But something stopped you. This falls under the hadith of the messenger. إِذَا الْتَقَ الْمُسْلِمَانِ بِسَيْفَيْهِمَا فَالْقَاتِلُ وَالْمَقْتُولُ فِي النَّارِ If two groups of the Muslims, or two individuals from the Muslims, meet one another with their sword, then the one that is killing and the one that is killed, both of them are in the hellfire. The Sahabas, they said, يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ هَذَا الْقَاتِلُ فَمَبَلُ الْمَقْتُولُ That is the one that's killing, we understand. But the one that's being killed, why is he going to end up to the hellfire? Because the Prophet said, إِنَّهُ كَانَ حَرِيصًا عَلَى قَتْلِ صَاحِبِهِ because he was striving to kill his brother. He was what? He wanted to kill him. This man, it came to his mind, he wanted to do it, but he was unable to do it. Something, one, one thing or another, actually stopped him from it. The fourth one, which is, 
it came to his mind, he thought of it and he actually executed it. He did it. He made it happen. He made it, he actually made it take place. And that one he gets, he gets a sin for it as well. So the actions that are ma'murat and the actions which are the menhiyat, that's how it is de dealt with in regards to the intention. That's how it is in regards to the intention. This hadith, brothers, if you look at it, it has come, if you look at the riwayah that we have, we're looking at right now, the hadith has come, إِنَّمَا الْأَعْمَالُ بِالنِّيَّةِ Niyat is plural. And it's also come in the, in the wording, إِنَّمَا الْأَعْمَالُ بِالنِّيَّةِ so it's come as a general, it has be, it's, it's come as a plural, and it has come singular. How is that, and how can we bring that together? The scholars have answered it. They said, when it came as a um, uh, when it came as a plural, because the intention, it's a lot. People's intentions are a lot. Everyone does something for one reason or another. So it was correct. Because of the intentions that are a lot, and people's intentions are a lot, then the word niyat was plural. Because tanawa'at and niyat. Somebody does it for the sake of Allah, somebody does it because he, he, he done a promise, somebody does it because of his honor and his own reputation, some does it for the shaitan, somebody does it for this, and somebody does it for that. When it came singular, the word niyat, it came as a singular. Is because the place that the intention comes from. Where does the intention come from? The heart. It only comes from one place. And not many places. Because the mahal of the niyyah is the qalb. So that is why you see sometimes that it's jama' and sometimes it is mufrad. 